we've been taking um, this 4D flow and um, printing it in all kinds of different forms to both study the science of it, but also to study the, uh, the ability to do the surgery. And here's a few more images. I just think that these are really pretty and they're tiny, you know, they're, they're, they're three, four inches tall. Um, it's pretty amazing stuff. Um, I also started working on understanding, um, you know, we work a lot on the pulmonary, um, on the pulmonary valve. It's one of the most common valves to work on for kids. And we started understanding compliance of the tissue, wanted to really understand morphology. Every kid that comes in is so different. So if we could figure out, you know, what some common themes are, we can maybe start to better understand the types of interventions to make and maybe even understand the types of implants to put inside of that because the one size fits all really excludes the vast majority of kids. And the biggest need in pediatric cardiology is for patient specific implants. We started to do a lot of work on um, the materials. Um, you know, moving into the implant space means having a hemocompatible material. And that's been by far the biggest limitation over the years. 3D printing has been great, but the vast majority of these materials are highly toxic and you wouldn't want to put into your bloodstream. And so we worked really hard um, with a, a wonderful polymer chemist to develop hemocompatible material and have been doing a lot of these studies um, ourselves on campus.